Hey geeks, welcome to 256 Seconds with Donette Dave. I'm Dave McCarter. Uh, it's been a long time since I've recorded one of these, but I wanted to record something that I've been talking about for a very, very long time, and that's how you handle exceptions in your code. Before we begin, I wanted to talk to you about my coding standards book available on Amazon.com. Everything I'm going to tell you today is in my coding standards book, so I hope you go pick up a copy. The other thing is everything I'm going to talk to you about can pertain to any language. I'm going to show you how I do things in .NET, but basically these concepts can be applied to any programming language out there. So there's two things I think about when I'm writing code and when I'm thinking about exceptions, which I always am, because exceptions can happen. No matter how good of a coder you are, exceptions will happen. I guarantee it. One is how to handle exceptions in DLLs and how do you handle exceptions in executables. Both these types of assemblies in .NET, you should think differently, and I'll explain why. Handling exceptions in a DLL differs from handling exceptions in EXEs. The next episode of this, I'll talk about how we handle it in EXEs and websites, etc. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how do you handle exceptions in DLLs. Before I talk about handling exceptions, I want to talk about preventing them, something I detail a lot in my coding standards book. So I want to show you this method, compute hash, that's in my open source library, Spargin. And you can see here that the first thing I do is I check to make sure the input string is not null. If it is, in this case, I'm returning back an empty string. You could return an exception, but a lot of people don't like that in a case like this. In a simple method like this, uh, sending back an exception because the input was null is probably not a good idea. It might just upset the people using your library. You could also return back an empty collection, an empty array, really depends um, on what the code is doing. Now, if the code is reaching out to a database and something bad happens in the database, usually you want that exception to bubble up to the execution layer. And we'll talk about that in the next episode. One of my rules of thumbs in DLLs is I don't catch exceptions unless I can actually do something with them. Otherwise, I let them bubble up to the execution layer that we'll talk about in the next episode. So I want to show you this method called copy files, which takes in a collection of files and then copies them to a different location. Now, because you know you can have one or more files, I didn't want this method just to stop because one exception happened. I wanted it to keep going and try the other files too, of course. So you can see here in my for loop, I'm, uh, I have a try catch. And in here, if, some, if an exception happens, you look down here, if an IO exception, security exception, or an unauthorized exception happens, what I'm doing in this case, I'm not throwing the exception. What I'm doing is I'm throwing an event. So if the caller wants to know about the exceptions, they can attach the event and they get notified, log it, tell the user, whatever they want to do. But I'm giving them that choice. I'm not throwing the exception. I'm just notifying the caller through an event. And this method here is .NET assembly. If an exception happens, then I'm trapping the bad image format exception. And if that happens, I just return false. I don't need to notify the user of the actual exception. I'm just returning false saying, yep, this is not a .NET assembly because something happened. And uh, so try again. Also in some methods that I write, I actually allow the caller of the code to send in their logger object. And if it's there, then I'll log the exception for them. I don't do this very much, uh, but I do it um, every so often. In this case, ensure high priority. You can see here, I'm trying to set the priority for the um, process. And then if an invalid operation exception happens um, and the logger is not null, of course, then I log the message for the user. But the majority of the code that I write, I don't do exception handling in DLLs. I let the exception bubble up. And here's an example, uh, run process and ignore output, where there, as you can see, I'm not checking for any exception. 
Now at the top, I am doing some fluid validation from Spargin uh, to make sure that the file name isn't null and the argument's not null. That's a little bit different. That's uh, validating data. And I'll talk about that in a different video. I would say 90 plus percent of the code that I write in DLLs, there's no exception handling whatsoever. So remember, when you're trapping exceptions in DLLs, generally you should only be trapping exceptions that you can do something with the exception, like close a file handle, close a database uh, connection, things like that. Otherwise, just let it bubble up to the calling code and let them deal with it. Uh, but the most important thing is logging. And one of my other rules is don't log from DLLs. Uh, the only reason I showed you the one example that takes in the iLogger is because the iLogger is part of the .NET framework. The reason I don't log from DLLs is that might tightly couple the logging framework to the DLL itself. And you never, never want to do that. So that's why I'm glad you know, I don't know how many years ago, Microsoft finally added a common interface iLogger uh, to .NET to allow us to take in these objects and use them if we need to. But generally, I don't write a lot of that code either. Now let's shift gears a little bit. And I'm not sure if this happens in all programming languages, but in .NET, when you return back from a function or a method, you can only return back one object. Some people, depending on the code, of course, might want to return back a status, an object, and maybe any exceptions that happened. So currently in .NET, there's, there's no built-in mechanism to do that. I know they're working on it, but there's, it's not on the roadmap. I have no idea when it's going to happen. And so last year, I decided to create my own result object called Simple Result. And Simple Result allows you to return back those three things, the actual object, a status and any exceptions that might have happened. It's really easy to use simple result. So here in this method called delete files, you can see here on line 278 is where I set up the result, the simple result object. Then down here on line 287, I'm trying to delete a file. And uh, we all know that deleting a file can cause all kinds of different exceptions. And they're all listed down here. Argument exception, argument null exception, directory not found exception, IO exception, not supported exception, path too long exception, or unauthorized access exception. How do I know? So if I just hover over delete, you can see IntelliSense shows me all the exceptions that can happen. And that's where I came up with this list. Now you can choose to, to trap all of them as I am in this uh, method or just one or two that you can actually do something with. But in this method, I'm trying to trap everything. Because down here, if an exception does happen on line 300, you can see I'm adding the exception to simple result, which will automatically set the status to failed. Then I continue on with the code, and then at the end of the block, uh, the method block, then I return back the simple result. So that's an easy way to return back these multiple things. And in this case, uh, deleting files using simple result uh, made a lot of sense. Now I don't use simple result a lot. I only do it when I really need to because I fall back on my other principles is either either if the if the iLogger is not passed in, then I just let it bubble up or I just let it bubble up. Or I return back true or false or an empty collection or something like that to prevent an exception happening. That's that's how I handle exceptions in DLLs. So to recap, remember, don't trap exceptions unless you actually have to. Only trap exceptions if you can do something with them. Otherwise, let it bubble up to the calling code. You can return back uh, exceptions in an event if you, if you want to, like I showed you. Or you can use something like simple result to return back an exception along with the object and along with the status. So that's it for this episode. Uh, the next episode I'll be recording very shortly is how do you handle exceptions in executables? Because it's very, very important. Uh, everything is logged, everything is handled because otherwise you'll never be able to track down the bug. See you next time.